You know, in particular, um, what we often find where there is conflict is we find um, very little uh, interest in understanding, as it were, the other side. We find judgmental mind, we find blaming, we find anger, and speech which come out of all those qualities, which are often uh, not going to be very helpful. And I've given sometimes uh, workshops for activists on uh, working with difficult emotions, working with judgmental mind, and connecting that with speech. And, uh, and so one of the ways that we would uh, bring skillful speech into context of conflict would be to be quite uh, careful with our speech. Can I, and again, this is, this is linked with approaches in which the aim of social change isn't to defeat the enemy, but it's reconciliation. So I'm aligning myself in that way with traditions of nonviolence, uh, traditions of Gandhi and King and so forth. So there are many different approaches to social change that uh, would have different emphases. You know, so one example I can think of that's quite a powerful story was documented in a film series and a book called A Force More Powerful, which is a recent history of a number of episodes uh, in which uh, nonviolent changes occurred. And this occurred in 1960 in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, where there was a very active um, training in nonviolence. And uh, very interestingly, at a key moment when there had just actually been a bombing of the uh, house of the most prominent African-American lawyer in Nashville. And there was outrage about the bombing. And there was a march that took place, which uh, ended up having about 1,500 people who walked to uh, City Hall in uh, segregated Nashville. There had been a campaign of uh, sit-ins and so forth to try to desegregate Nashville. And um, as that march got to City Hall, there was an African-American activist named, uh, who was a minister named C.T. Vivian who got in an argument with the mayor about what was happening and it was very polarized and uh, people were angry on both sides. I would say there was not a mutual attempt to understand or to have empathy. At that point, one of the uh, student activists named Diane Nash, uh, African-American leader, of the student movement, she intervened and she spoke with the mayor and she asked him a very pointed question. She asked him something like this, in your heart, do you believe that having segregated uh, places in restaurants, in uh, bathrooms and so forth is morally right. And she asked him that question very directly, I think, with an attitude we might say of respect and an intention to uh, connect and really ask a question. And at that point, um, the mayor stood before the cameras and he said, no, I do not think that is morally justified. With that, the whole edifice of segregation started to break apart. And within a short time, uh, within a short time, there was desegregation at the uh, downtown businesses, lunch counters, and so forth. And I point to that because that was, I would say, a very skillful speech, which was uh, moving away from polarization based on understanding. And of course, it was in that particular context, and maybe another mayor would have responded differently, but in that context, that had dramatic effect. And so uh, I think there's a tremendous role for skillful speech. That's just one example. I could give a lot of others, but I think the the key point here is that we would train in uh, easier situations, much as, you know, if you see that film, the training in Nashville was the most developed training for nonviolence in uh, the Southern Civil Rights Movement. And you can see in the films, they were actually training in safe environments where they would try to learn how to keep their center with hateful speech coming at them, how to be able to respond skillfully 
So they did role plays and they did a lot of other training. So that's really a key point, that the trainings become very crucial because without the training and without the bringing of skillful speech to these situations um, at difficult moments, we'll tend to revert to our conditioning. 